My task today is to go through some of the basics of uh, the Fontaine circulation and the plumbing aspects of, of what is achieved. Um, the, uh, sorry, just looking for a pointer. Anyhow, the purpose of the Fontaine circulation is to create a, a circulation that means we don't have to have two ventricles. It's a circulation designed so that the venous return, the blood returning from the body, can go directly to the lungs and moves through the lungs passively um, and then returns to the heart, which can then be pumped out to the body. And you can see the, the tube uh, that connects the inferior vena cava down the bottom up to the pulmonary arteries in blue across the top. And up from the top is the venous return from the superior vena cava from the upper body in that position. Um, blood is not pumped, and I think that's an essential thing to understand. The reason, of course, we're doing this is because the children are born with a single or so-called functional single ventricle. And, um, of course, all blood will be oxygenated as it goes through the lungs before it comes back to the heart. And so the, the miracle of this procedure, uh, especially when it was first devised, is that the patients go from being blue and cyanosed to being pink. And that's a, a great moment, I think, uh, parents today and those who care for the children um, in the hospital also share in. I think there were a lot of people who wondered if this was possible. And um, one of the reasons that it is possible is because red blood cells have momentum and that the heart imparts um, energy to the red cells as it pushes them um, up through the aorta and that momentum of those red cells is carried through the tissues and is partly responsible for, for them coming back um, through the lungs. There are a couple of other important elements that make the Fontaine circulation work and one is the effect of the muscle pumps in various parts of the body. You can see the calves in this typical Fontaine patient here uh, which um, when contracting will help to accelerate blood back towards the back towards the heart and uh, back towards the lungs and thence the heart. The other important thing is the effect of respiration. As you breathe in, uh, it sucks, uh, as a Fontaine patient, a person breathes in, it sucks um, the blood back towards the um, lungs and then the elastic recoil of the lungs when you breathe out um, accelerates that blood um, to the heart. And these are very important um, fundamentals of the Fontaine circulation and opportunities for, for therapy that you'll hear about later. The ideals of a good Fontaine circulation include that we, it, the ventricle has to work well. Um, we would also like the, the valves that regulate flow and make sure that the blood only goes forward um, are also working. It's important to maintain a normal rhythm and it's important also that the pathways, particularly from the lower body and up through the, the pulmonary arteries to the lungs are unobstructed. Thank you, Andrew. Um, the timing will be well known to most of you. Uh, there's a neonatal operation which deals with the issues, either too much blood flow to the lungs or too little blood flow to the lungs. The superior cava pulmonary connection, you might know it as a GLEN or a BCPS, is usually done between three and six months, depending on the child's specific anatomy. And the Fontan is variably performed between three and six years of age around the world. Um, and there's a lot of institutional practices that um, specify how individuals um, travel that journey. Um, the history of the Fontan procedure is a, a relatively long one and started with this uh, this way of, of sending blood flow from the lower body to the lungs, making use of the um, appendage, the right atrial oracle that's uh, mentioned there, to allow blood to travel back up to the, the pulmonary arteries. And this is a great, um, great procedure and a, a, the first iteration of a great operation. But what it did do was um, start a cycle that led to right atrial dilatation. And you can see the swirling that's um, depicted there within the, the atrium. And that atrial distension um, can cause problems with both function and rhythm. And they're two important things that we'll be discussing. The next iteration was the so-called lateral tunnel where less of the atrium was used to, to create a pathway 
and there's a more direct pathway and less swirling and, and turbulence. And uh, that is also a good operation. Um, but probably we would view this current iteration, the so-called extra cardiac conduit, which can be done much more simply, much faster, and with much less um, manipulation and surgery of the atrium as the, the current standard. And that um, Gore-Tex conduit is a piece of well-designed plastic which is resistant to clot formation uh, and is put in in a size which, um, thank you again, um, which uh, will be sufficient um, to last the child um, throughout their adult life. One of the important things I wanted to discuss were the pressure changes, particularly in the lower body at the time of Fontan completion. We've just got two um, circulations here that I'm going to build on. This is the, the superior cava pulmonary connection or gland or BCPS and this is the situation before the Fontan completion where the IVC, the inferior vena cava, is draining to the right atrium. And of course at surgery this is the pathway that's created. Now if you look at the typical pressures that might be seen at, in the various parts of the circulation beforehand, you'll see that the pressure in the SVC, let's say it's 12 millimetres of mercury. Um, that should be the same as the pulmonary artery pressure because there should be no obstructions in that pathway. The right atrial pressure will be around 6 millimetres of mercury. And so the organs in the lower body, in particular the liver, um, elements of the, the intestines and the bowel and the kidneys, will be seeing a venous pressure the same as the right atrium, which will be 6 millimetres of mercury. But at the time that the Fontan is done, this changes significantly and the liver and kidneys and all the other downstream organs will see the same pressure as the pulmonary arteries because this is all connected in an unobstructed way. And so the pressure is jumping, um, in this case doubling, but in some patients, um, or in many patients, the pulmonary artery pressure is significantly higher than this. And the process of, sur of, of surgery and being on the heart-lung machine often make this pulmonary artery pressure significantly higher for a period of time. And this um, can cause some problems. This is a picture of um, the microvasculature, so the small vessels that are in the tissues. And in the normal situation, the pressure at the arterial end is pretty high and the pressure at the venous end is pretty low. There is some escape of fluid through what is a semi-permeable um, situation here and that tissue fluid is collected by the lymphatic system and the lymph is carried back towards the heart um, via a complex set of very small pathways which are not seen on regular imaging of any sort and um, they empty into the, the big veins in the chest. Now of course if you make the pressure much higher um, at the venous end it will actually make more uh, fluid come out of the circulation and this fluid will sit in the in the space um, outside the blood vessels and um, many will remember this if, if they've, um, their child has already had a Fontan but this fluid is, still needs to be collected by the lymphatic path, pathway um, and we're very reliant on that as a way of clearing all that um, excess fluid which has come out. Now Sometimes the fluid that's produced is in excess of what the lymphatic system can cope with. And in that situation, fluid will sit wherever it can accumulate, such as outside the lungs, but within the chest, within the abdomen. Um, and you'll remember the drains that were, were, were placed and started to drain quite a lot and then slowed down over time. And the body adapts over time, mostly because we believe that the lymphatic system um, can uh, lift its game, as it were, and cart away more fluid and empty it up into the great veins in the situation here. It's not clear exactly how the body adapts um, and um, people adapt at different rates. And so some people are in hospital for a short time, some people are in hospital for a long time. And in some people we have to do things to reduce the production of this fluid um, in, a, in a more intensive way. Um, these um, changes in lymphatic circulation are well tolerated by most people. Um, it's possible that the venous pressure, uh, which is 
we think the fundamental change in, in the, the physiology may account for some of the symptoms that are described, the aching legs, um, certainly the increase in, in varicose veins and other things that some adult Fontan patients um, see at an increased rate. And it's possible also that that elevated venous pressure may have an impact on on the function of downstream organs, and Dr. Iyengar will speak about those later today. And it's likely also that these changes in venous pressure and lymphatic production and, and coping mechanisms relate to the formation of some of the rare complications that you may have heard of, such as plastic bronchitis and protein-losing enteropathy. So what can be done to reduce the lower body blood pressure? Well, a lot of it's about the plumbing. And um, by creating better pathways with less energy loss as the, as the red cells travel the path to the lungs, uh, we believe that the pressure will be lower. And there's quite a lot of effort put into creating um, pathways that are as good as they can be. And during the first couple of stages of surgery and the medical treatment that goes along with that, trying to optimise all the elements of the circulation that that's li that likely to make the pressure lower. Um, there are also other things that you will hear about today, such as training the respiratory muscles to augment that um, negative pressure um, that, that we talked about before. And in the future, there may be devices that accelerate blood flow up the inferior vena cava and distribute the blood to the lungs um, in a better way. But there is also one other intervention called fenestration, uh, which I did want to mention because it's um, an important uh, clinical issue going forward. A fenestration is a little communication between the venous pathway and the atrium. Um, the pictures that I showed before had no connection there. But if you create a connection, and these are just different forms of the same thing, some blood is able to pass up through here and return to the heart. And of course, that, the blood that comes up here and goes in here will go to the body and will never see the lungs, and so the saturations will be lower. The advantages of doing a fenestration is that the venous pressure, uh, the Fontan pressure as it were, will be lower. And it will be lower proportional to the size of the hole that's created. But in normal circumstances, it will be lower by about two to four millimetres of mercury, which is a very um, useful reduction. Some people think that doing this also allows the, the ventricle to work better because it's better loaded. It doesn't have to wait for blood to come through the lungs. It's getting some extra blood already, and that therefore you might exercise better. And it's also possible that with a lower venous pressure, the, the effusions, the fluid production after surgery might resolve faster. And you can close it in the catheter lab um, if you feel that's appropriate. The disadvantages are that the saturations will be lower and that that may actually influence exercise capacity to counterbalance the advantages that are seen elsewhere. And having a little hole here does expose you to the risks of, um, of clots passing through um, from the lower body through the fenestration to the heart and making uh, a, risk, a high risk for, for stroke and therefore preventing those clots forming um, is an important part of managing people with fenestrations, and usually that involves treatment with warfarin. There have been very significant improvements in the safety of the Fontan procedure. Um, this is a procedure where we discuss with most people that we expect things to go well. Um, the modern versions of the operation are really much better than the old versions, but the fundamental physiology, the elevation in the lower body venous pressure, is pretty much unchanged. Understanding how this physiology changes with time is one of the things that we need to do in the future, and uh, your participation in the registry is a, a good start to that. Thank you. Thank you.